Okay, good morning. Uh, bilinear maps, part two. So last time uh, we had defined, uh, so here's the setup again. So we have our finite dimensional vector space with a basis. Um, and then uh, what we did last time was we defined uh, a bilinear map on uh, V. And remember that this, this symbol um, T02 denotes the set of all bilinear maps. Um, and uh, this thing is defined by Okay, so um, so this is a bilinear map. So it takes two vectors and gives you a number. Uh, so the first vector we expand in a basis, and the second one as well. And then the definition of this uh, of this symbol here, which we um, said out loud to be E J tensor E K. Uh, the definition of this is uh, that it's U J V K. Okay, and then. Uh, what I said that we were going to do the last time um, is we're going to show that uh, this thing or the set of all these things is a basis for the set of all bilinear maps. Okay, so the proof is uh, rather similar uh, to uh, um, the similar proof, the similar statement we had for the dual basis, right? Um, and so the idea is rather similar as well. We start with a basis, and then we define a dual basis, which we denoted by um, um, e super one up to e super n was a, a basis for v star. Um, uh, and here we're defining uh, a basis not for V star, but for the set of bilinear maps. And we denote that basis like so. So given a basis for V, there's induced bases for all kinds of uh, different things. Okay, so um, uh, to prove that it's a basis, we're going to show that it's linearly independent. Okay, so what you do, of course, is you write down a linear combination of these guys um, and set it equal to zero, uh, and then show that uh, the coefficients in the linear combination are necessarily zero. And so we write a linear combination of these, and we're going to, of course, use the summation convention. And so I have some, uh, so, so these um, vectors uh, in the vector space of bilinear maps are indexed by uh, J and K. Um, so I need to have my uh, coefficients in the linear combination also indexed by J and K. And so I just have some constants, which are C, J, K, and I write them like this. I'm gonna suppose that this is equal to zero, right? And then I'm going to prove that all the CJKs must be uh, must be zero. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, is uh, so this thing all together is a bilinear map, and it's the zero bilinear map. Um, uh, and therefore, what this thing does is it looks for two vectors in the vector space and it gives you a number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed that two special vectors. Uh, and it won't surprise you to know that the special vectors you give it are one of the basis vectors uh, and then see what happens, okay? All right, so then C, J, K 
E J tensor E K. Uh, sorry, done that here. All right. Um, so this is a bilinear map. That whole thing. Um, uh, and therefore, I'm going to give it two vectors, and I'm going to give it the vectors E, uh, L, and E, M. Okay. Um, and, you know, you should make sure that you, that the zero here is not the zero scalar, it's the zero in this vector space. Okay. So this is the zero bilinear map. Um, and so the zero bilinear map, by definition, uh, will take, um, Two arguments. In this case, the arguments we're giving it are EL and EM. Um, and of course, the zero by the new map just returns zero. Okay. All right. So now we just uh, uh, use definitions. Okay. So we use the definition of uh, this symbol. All right. Um, uh, so this means that um, uh, C, J, K. Okay, now, what is, what is this symbol? Okay, so the symbol, what it does is it takes two vectors. Okay, so in this case, U is this vector and V is this vector. Uh, and it returns the, uh, the Jth component of U and the Kth component of V. All right. So in this situation, it's going to return the jth component of the lth basis vector multiplied by the kth component of the mth basis vector. Okay. So we've seen this before. So the jth component of the lth basis vector um, is one, unless uh, or, or is zero, unless j is equal to l, in which case it's one. And so the symbol we used for that was the Kronecker delta. Okay, and then similarly, EK of EM, so the kth uh, component of the mth basis vector is zero, unless K is equal to M, uh, in which case it's one. And uh, so this will be delta K uh, M, right? And so notice that the, the, the indices here uh, are dictated by uh, the indices here, right? Okay, and this is equal to zero. Right, so now we just use uh, rules for manipulating Kronecker deltas. All right, so uh, here I have a, a Kronecker delta. One of its indices is being summed over, that's J. And here I have a Kronecker delta, and one of its indices is being summed over, and that's uh, K. And so the rule is is that when you have an index of a Kronecker delta summed over, that that essentially amounts to just replacing that index. With the summed index, which is uh, 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 with the unsummed index of the Kronecker delta, which is L, right? So this means that C, whoops, C, uh, C, L, M uh, is equal to zero. Okay, and this must be true for every L and M, um, uh, and so therefore uh, we get linear independence. Okay, spanning. All right, so what I need to do is I need to take any bilinear map, and I'll call it B, All right? And what I need to do is show that B is a linear combination of uh, uh, these EJ tensor uh, EKs, okay? And so just like it was in the, the case of proving that the dual basis spanned, it's basically a proof by what else could it possibly be. You sort of assemble all the symbols on the page uh, uh, and then um, um, the answer suggests itself. Okay. So I'm gonna take B and I wanna write B as the linear combination of E, J, tensor, E, K. All right, and the and what I need to do is I need to deduce or guess or prove uh, what are the coefficients in this linear combination, and this is the um, 
uh, where the what else can it possibly be argument comes up because what is it that I need to do? I need to put in here, I have to put scalars and the scalars are going to be indexed of course by J and K because it's going to be a linear combination. So I'm going to be summing. And so that means that uh, for every J and K from one to N, I need a number, which is the, the coefficient of the basis vector uh, for B in that case. Um, so I need N squared numbers. And there's only one way, given the data that you have, okay, and what's the data that you have? You don't have a lot, right? You have, um, uh, you have a basis for V, okay? And you have a B. And from that, you need to construct N squared scalars. Well, the only way to do that is like this. Okay, because that thing after all is a number. Okay, and there's the summation that's being applied here over J and over K, right? So the point is, is that the coefficients in this linear combination are exactly uh, uh, the Bs evaluated on the basis vectors. Okay, <clears throat> so we need to show that that's true. All right, now the way we're going to do that is we're going to show, uh, so on each side of this equation, on this side and on this side, uh, we have a bilinear map. And the way that you show that two bilinear maps are equal is you show that uh, if you take any two vectors in the vector space and um, give them as arguments to those two bilinear maps, you get the same numbers out, okay? Um, so we're gonna let u be a vector in the vector space. And I'm going to, of course, uh, write it as a linear combination of the basis vectors. Sorry. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of separately evaluate the sides of this equation. Okay, so B of U B is B of U L E L V M E M. Okay, now B is bilinear. Okay, so, and here I have scalar multiplication uh, and here I have scalar multiplication, but bilinearity means I can move the scalars uh, uh, out front. Okay, so I get U L V M B of E L E M. Okay, and that's it. There's nothing else I can do with that. All right. Uh, so that's that tells me what the uh, uh, the left hand side of this formula that I'm trying to prove uh, looks like when I evaluate it on two vectors. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this side. Okay. So this is you know a bit a bit more tedious, but it's all elementary if you are an old hand at the summation convention. Okay, um, so that whole thing is a bilinear map, right? So it's a linear combination of these basis bilinear maps. And I'm gonna act on the vectors U and V. Okay, all right. So um, uh, now, here, I'm going to use the definition. So this is a linear combination of bilinear maps, right? So these are each bilinear maps, these are scalars. So this whole thing is a linear combination of bilinear maps. And I'm going to use the definition of scalar multiplication of bilinear maps that I talked about last time. Uh, and what that says is that what I do is I feed each of these arguments to each term separately uh, in the linear combination, okay? so. The point of that is that you get, um, sorry, that's just equality. So you get B of E, J, E, K, E, J, tensor, E, K, 
acting on the arguments. You, um, um, and so I'll sort of put the parentheses here to make it clear what I have actually done. Okay, so again, that's just by definition of scalar multiplication and end vector addition in uh, the vector space of bilinear mappings. Okay. <clears throat> and now we have something that looks quite familiar to us. Okay. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, an expression like this. And again, it's bilinear. So it's linear with respect to this linear combination and it's linear with respect to this linear combination. And so uh, this is then going to be um, U, L, V, M, E, J, tensor, E, K of E, L, E, M, okay? All right, and this we know what it is, of course. It's delta J L and delta K M. All right, so, and I, I won't, you know, and so, you know, once you get used to these things, then immediately what you see is that you just swap that L for, uh, um, uh, for that J and that M uh, for that K. But let's not skip the steps and, um, because we're still kind of new with summation convention. Okay. All right. So I, again, I'm going to be uh, uh, um, getting rid of the deltas by swapping uh, swapping out some indices. So I have this. Oopsie. I have uh, uh, this L that's being summed over and this M that's being summed over. But, you know, I can also, I also see that this J and this J are being summed over and this K and this K are being summed over. So I have, you know, four possible ways of uh, swapping out indices. It totally doesn't matter uh, which of those four you choose. Um, I'm going to choose the one uh, that's going to give me uh, the answer, which immediately looks like what I want to compare it to. Okay, so I want to keep uh, L and M. It does it actually? You know what? I'm going to do um, um, not that. I'm going to, uh, and and then we're going to see why it's actually the same. Okay, so what I so the point is is what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap that L for this J and this M for this K. All right, so I get B, E J, E K, um, U J. V, K, all right? So there's four choices you can make there in terms of uh, uh, you, you know, eliminating the Kronecker deltas, right? And I've made one of those four choices. I've made in some sense, you know, the completely wrong one, okay? If my objective is to compare it to that expression. Okay, but the point is uh, uh, that this thing is actually exactly, these two expressions are the same. The only difference between these two expressions are the indices, the labels I've used for the indices. And it just does not matter uh, which labels you use. So I can swap labels freely over summed indices. You cannot swap labels freely over free indices, okay? Free indices have to match on both sides of the equation. But over summed indices, you can um, call them whatever you want. And so I can, for example, name J to uh, L and K to M. Okay, but you, of course, you have to do it consistently. Every K you have to choose change to an M and every L you have to, um, J you have to change to an L, okay? Um, and the point is that these two things agree, okay? And so therefore our claim, <clears throat> which was uh, this, okay? Our claim is true because we've shown that this side is equal to that side. Okay, and so that shows we have the spanning property, and so that uh, 
proves the thing that I wanted to prove. Okay, does that make sense? <clears throat> okay. Um, Let's look at a very simple example again. All right. Um, so uh, uh, I have uh, Rn, okay, um, and I choose the standard basis. Actually, sorry. Before I do the example, um, uh, let me maybe it's it's. I apologize. It's it's best to introduce some uh, other kind of terminology. So notation. Uh, it's not notation. It's terminology. All right. So um, if B is a bilinear map. And if uh, E's are a basis, the matrix for B in this basis. Is um, B. Okay, and so I assemble um, these coefficients in the linear combination that I talked about up here. I assemble those into an n by n matrix. So it's going to be B of E1, um, E1, and then B of E1, E2, and so on. Okay. Um, and uh, we usually write B, I, J uh, to be B of E, I, E, J, like so. Okay. And so these are called um, the components. of B, okay? Just, you know, and that's what it is, right? If you have a basis uh, and you have a vector and you write the vector as a linear combination of the basis, the terms in the linear combination are the components. So this is just, um, it's not really a definition. It's just a, the usual notation applied to this particular setting, okay? Now, all right, so now, what, now I'll, I'll, I'll look at the example. We'll take uh, V to be Rn and uh, E1, En to be the standard basis. Okay, so let's look at um, all this stuff in this particular case, right? So we have a vector space and we have um, um, uh, a basis. So we can talk about what's the, uh, what is the basis. E 
EJ tensor EK. Four T zero two of our N. Okay. All right. Um, well, uh, uh, it is what it is in some sense, right? And uh, uh, at some point that becomes the answer, the best answer to these kinds of questions. Um, uh, and what I mean by that is we have a precise definition for what that symbol means, right? It means that uh, if you take uh, uh, this bilinear map and you give it two vectors, u and v, it returns the product of the jth component of u and the kth component of v. And that's what it is. And it's nothing more than that. Um, uh, but, you know, I want to, take uh, advantage of the simplicity of this uh, um, of this vector space, okay, to maybe give a more explicit representation of, uh, of, of what these basis vectors for the uh, set of bilinear maps looks like, okay? So we, um, we will write the um, matrix for E, J, tensor, E, K. Um, all right. And so what will that matrix be? Well, the matrix is going to be, sorry, so I'm using this uh, terminology here. Okay. All right. And so, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this formula in the particular case of uh, one of the basis vectors, EJ tensor EK. All right. And we're going to see that the linear, that the matrix uh, in this case is um, simple. Okay. So the matrix attached to EJ tensor EK is. Okay, well, what's it going to be? Um, well, first, this is maybe a good chance to play a guessing game. Does anyone want to guess what the what the matrix of uh, uh, of this bilinear mapping is going to be? What do you think the? Sorry, yeah, go ahead. The identity matrix. Um, yeah, I know why you would say that, but it's not. So remember uh, that there's going to be one of these for every J and every K, all right? So it's certainly not gonna be the identity matrix for every J and K. So it's gonna have to somehow depend on a, a J and K. There's only one in the JK component. And all That's zero. Right, right. So it's going to have, uh, according to the way I've labeled my entries here, right? Um, it's going to have a one. Everything's going to be zero. And in the middle of the matrix, there's going to be a single one. And it's going to be in, the, by the way I've labeled my uh, rows and columns here, it's going to be in the jth row and the kth column. Okay. So it's going to look like this. Okay, so in the jth row and the case column, I'm gonna have a lonely one. Okay, so that's kind of what the matrix representation of this basis looks like. All right. Okay. <clears throat> But like I say, at some point, it's not necessarily advantageous to think about um, uh, the matrix representatives of this thing. And it's sort of more, just more advantageous to just use it as what it is, which is that it's a, a bilinear mapping, which returns the product of the uh, jth component of the first entry and the kth component of the second entry. OK, now. Um, uh, so what, what I want to do now is uh, uh, just like when we talked about um, 
dual spaces and uh, matrix representations for dual vectors. Okay, so a dual vector we saw was a uh, a, a row vector, right? A, a one by n matrix, and if we represented a, a vector by an n by one matrix, so a column vector, um, then the a dual vector acting on a vector was just matrix multiplication. Okay, um, and you know that led to a potential confusion, which is that you kind of in your mind sometimes want to uh, 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 think that row vectors and column vectors should not be that different, um, uh, but they are in the way in in the world that we're working in right now. They're very different because they represent completely different things. A row vector represents um, an element of the dual space, and a column vector uh, represents an element of the vector space, and those are not the same thing. Um, uh, and so there's a similar kind of a confusion uh, that arises with bilinear mappings as well. Um, and that is the idea that for every bilinear mapping B uh, and, and a choice of a basis, um, I have a matrix. Now, you're used to thinking of matrices as kind of being connected to linear mappings, okay? Um, and well, we're going to see that there is a linear mapping here, but it's not necessarily one that you want it to be. Uh, so, for example, um, uh, it's not going to be a linear mapping from V to V, all right? Um, although it looks like it could be, right? It has the right size. Um, uh, uh, but when I write this matrix down, it's not the matrix of a linear mapping from V to V, because what it is is that it's the matrix for a bilinear mapping, and that's what it is. Okay, it's nothing different from that um, at, at this point. Um, and so don't imagine that because I've written um, uh, this as a matrix, that there's somehow some linear mapping that goes from V to V. There's going to be a linear mapping and we're gonna talk about what that is. Um, but, um, so let me write down what's not true. Okay, so that's not true, all right? Um, it's, again, it is what it is. It's the matrix representation of a bilinear mapping on V, okay? And that's not the same thing as a linear mapping from V to V, okay? However, it is uh, the matrix representative. Of a linear mapping. Okay, so the matrix for B serves now two purposes. Um, uh, it serves to be the matrix representative of, of the bilinear mapping B, but it's also going to serve to be the matrix representative of a linear mapping that I'm now going to define. So I have, I'm going to have this mapping and I'm going to call it something slightly weird. I'm going to call it B flat. Okay. So that's flat, like flat is in flat and sharp from, from music. Okay. And so we're going to see why that's called B flat. And we're also going to use B sharp, um, uh, but um, B flat. Okay. And B flat is going to be a linear mapping from V, and again, 
because B is an N by N matrix, it's going to have, and if I'm telling you that it's going to be a, a matrix representation for a linear mapping, it has to be between two N dimensional vector spaces. There's only one other uh, N dimensional vector space in existence here, apart from V. And I've already told you that it can't be a linear mapping from V to V. So it has to be a linear mapping either from the other one into V or from V into the other one. And the other one, of course, is V star. Okay, so associated with every bilinear mapping is a linear mapping from V into V star. Okay, and how do I define that thing? Okay, so I'll write down the formula that defines it and it's maybe gonna be confusing. Okay, so I'm gonna write B flat. Okay, all right, so now what does B flat do? Uh, my definition of B flat is that it goes from V into V star. Okay, so B flat will certainly take um, a vector from V as its argument. Okay, now what I know is that uh, when I give it an element of V in its argument, it returns for me something in V star. Okay, so that thing must necessarily be an element of V star and um, uh, therefore, um, this will define for, uh, for me an element of V star, which is thus wanting me to give it an element of V to define it, okay? So it's going to be B flat of V is an element of V star, and the element of V star is going to be defined by saying what it does to a vector uh, uh, in U, okay? And, you know, again, applying the rule of um, there's only one way to manipulate symbols. Um, um, you have two choices here. It can either be B of V comma U or B of U comma V. Those are your two choices. Um, and it's going to be this. Uh, let me just make sure I choose the one that I want. Like that. Okay. All right, now we're, we're mainly gonna be interested in the, in the case where B is symmetric. And so it actually doesn't matter if you choose um, U comma V or V comma U there, but in general it does. Okay. All right, so um, there's an object, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the following thing. So if I take a basis, for V and therefore it has a dual basis, which I write as uh... Okay. All right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna have two matrices. One is going to be uh, the matrix for B that I've uh, talked about up here, okay? The other matrix is going to be the matrix representation for this linear map, okay? And I claim that they're the same. All right. Okay, so both of these things are n by n matrices, but they're representing different things. This is representing the bilinear map V, or sorry, B, uh, and this is representing the linear map B going from here to here with respect to the basis for here and then the basis for here. All right, so uh, let's just go ahead and do this, all right? So we're gonna use the definition of matrix representation for a linear map, okay? Um, so I know that B flat of E, um, 
uh, of E uh, J, let's say. So B, B flat takes a, a vector in V. So I'm going to give it the Jth basis vector. Okay. And I know that this is going to be, um, and so I'm going to write the notation like this. I'm going to write it as B flat. Okay. Now B flat is going to be uh, a matrix. Uh, uh, I'm going to, um, well, B flat is a linear map, but I'm going to write some co components of a linear combination here. And the linear combination is going to be uh, of dual vectors. Okay. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble uh, my uh, vectors uh, like this. Okay. So this means, okay, so these things are the components of the linear map uh, uh, B flat, okay? So these are the components of B flat, which is a linear map from V to V star in the bases E1 up through EN and E super one up to E super N. Okay. It's so simple, it's confusing. All right. So this is just the, uh, the formula that defines the matrix for a linear map. Okay. And unlike the usual case where you have a map going from say U to V and you know, the, the components of the matrix will have one superscript and one subscript, you know, because the basis vectors for V star have superscripts, it turns out that both of these components are subscripts. Okay. So what I'm going to show is that these, uh, uh, these things are actually the same as the, um, uh, um, the components of the matrix for the bilinear map B. And how am I going to do that? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation. So what do I have here? I have that this side is an element of V star. And of course, therefore, this side is also an element of V star. And so therefore, this side is waiting for a vector V uh, uh, for you to give it a vector in V. And, and so therefore, so is this side. So I'm going to choose a smart vector uh, to feed the, to both sides of this equation. And of course, the smart vector is going to be a basis vector. Okay. So I'm simply going to take both sides of this equation and I'm going to give it a vector, the same vector, which is a basis vector. Okay, so it's going to be B flat of E J of E L, okay, equals B flat of K J uh, E K of E L. All right, so I've taken each side of the equation and I've acted, I've fed it as an argument, the vector, the basis vector EL, okay? And you know, I have to choose the index L in a smart way because here I have Ks. All right, now what's the definition, okay? So the definition of B flat that I have um, up here Okay, is that um, uh, B flat of two arguments is B of those same arguments in a particular order. Okay, uh, and that order is so that B of um, E L E J is equal to B flat of K J. All right, and so again, we have this thing which we've seen now a thousand times, right? Um, which is delta uh, KL. Okay. And now I do the thing I do with the uh, Kronecker deltas, right? I'm summing over K here, which means I can, um, right, sorry. Yeah, I uh, swap the, uh, uh, this K for this L. Okay, so this is B flat L J 
j. Okay, but this here is somewhere up here, right? That's exactly the component, the bij, bl, uh, lj or jl, I forget now, a uh, component of b, okay? Um, okay, and so that means that b, l, j is equal to b flat lj, but that's exactly what I set out to prove. Okay, and so, um, you know, I started out by telling you that this matrix is not the matrix of a linear map. Well, I just showed you that's not actually true, but because what it's not is it's not a, a matrix of a linear map from V to V, but it is the matrix of a linear map from V to V star. Okay, so what's the punchline? So let me say, um, uh, say it in, you know, sort of the mathematically right way to do that, uh, that there is a natural isomorphism of the vector spaces. T zero two of V and um, uh, L of V, V star, okay? Explicitly, it, this isomorphism is just exactly the isomorphism which sends B to B flat. Okay, and so the point is, is that when you have a bilinear map, um, there's literally two ways of thinking about that. You can think about it uh, as a bilinear map, or you can think about it as a linear map of the, from V into V star, okay? Um, and uh, uh, very often uh, people will uh, use the same symbol for B and for B flat, uh, and they'll just abuse it uh, and write it and uh, uh, use the same symbol B um, in the multiple different ways of a bilinear map and a linear map, okay? But I, I think for newcomers, it's maybe less confusing to actually uh, distinguish these and that's what the flat does. Okay, so why why is that flat? Why is that thing called flat? Okay. Well, let's see what this thing looks like. Okay, so I know um, if I take a vector V, in V, then, okay. Um, so let's go B of V. Okay. Um, and so, uh, so obviously we're going to write V uh, as a linear combination of basis vectors. Okay. And so the point is, is that the coefficient here is a superscript. Okay. As, as we'll see, All right? So this is uh, B of, uh, sorry, B flat of V. Okay, so with B flat of uh, V, J, E, J. And of course, B flat is, is, is linear. So this linear combination can be pulled outside B flat. Okay, and by our uh, uh, computations that we did up here, um, the components of B flat are uh, same as the components of B. Okay, so this is V uh, J um, uh, right. So it's B 
uh, KJ. So I have to make sure I get the end of season the right order. Okay. All right. So this just uses uh, um, our computations up here, right? So it's, um, uh, it's exactly this formula right here using the fact that B flat uh, is equal to B. Okay, and let me kind of rewrite that in a little bit, oops, better way. B, K, J, V, J, E, K. All right, so how does that possibly explain why I call this thing flat, okay? Um, So what it does is it converts V uh, uh, J, okay, with a superscript to B uh, K J V J, okay, and here the free index is a subscript. Okay, and so B flat flattens the index. If you want to know, you may not like that explanation, but that is the explanation. That's where the terminology comes from. Okay, all right. So we're getting near the end of our linear algebra. It's possible we'll finish it next time, but we're going to continue uh, talking about linear algebra. Then we're going to go back to uh, uh, um, differential geometry. Okay. Um, uh, and then um, um, uh, and then we'll go back to physics. Okay, so uh, we're slowly working our way back to talking about mechanical systems. Okay, that's it for today. So I'll stop the recording.